Welcome to the Just Plus Dot Plus You Show. We are so excited to have you here tonight. And to start the show, I wanted to say, uh, I wanted to do a quick shout out tonight. There are two people that really inspired me today. And uh, I've been really under the weather, so it's the first day I've been on my computer in a while. And so it was really nice to have all of this wonderful information to take my brain off of um, the healing process for just a little while. And um, a friend of mine, Alice Cooter, inspired me today. She wrote her of her, her own book, of her very first book, and I finished it. So not only did she write it and publish it, but she actually had it in a form I could read it on my Kindle. And so I bought it, and, and I finished reading it today. And it was about Thanksgiving and full of gratitude. So I've got a lot of um, great wonderful oozing happening. I don't know what else to call it right now. <laughs> well, literally other oozing. I do have a box of Kleenex, but sorry. I'll, okay. And then Jason Weiser was is another person that I wanted to do a quick shout out to because he uh, hosted a hangout yesterday that I wanted to watch live and was unable to do so. And he had a great 30 minute show that I took a lot of stuff away from. And who knows, you guys might be inspiration for my questions tonight. Because tonight, Scott, is the <laughs> Scott point, just counterpoint, so there, the turkey talk edition. How are you tonight, Scott? Well, I'm, I'm well. I, I have to admit that I haven't been this nervous since high school when I was on stage on a play. I can't even remember what the name of the play was, but I was down the hall and practicing my, and I was so involved with the play down the hall that I missed my cue, so they had to they had to uh, make up whatever they had to make up while someone went searching for me. Uh, they finally found me. I ran on stage, and my first line was, "Well, I'm sorry, I'm late, but here I am." And that was what I was supposed to have said in the first place. So there we go. <laughs> I'm sure that my a little known fact about Scott right there. <laughs> well. <laughs> Maybe later, maybe later tonight we'll talk. We'll find a little bit more out about Scott too, because what's what is this? What is this um, episode all about, Jess? You, you spill right, the beans. All right. So this episode, we decided once upon a time we thought it would be fun to ask each other questions that the other person did not know ahead of time. So whether it turned into a discussion or it was a, one of us answered and then the other one answered, it doesn't didn't doesn't really matter what comes next point is we don't know the questions that are going to be asked and I think that's why Scott's nervous which is kind of funny because I'm like oh I'm so glad this is going to be a great show there's going to be a lot of energy we have a fabulous group of people watching us and okay just jump in and do it let's go okay well you know I was going to prepare it let's see and here we go let's hope it works And for those of you that don't know Scott, um, that is a phrase that he says on this show once in a while. And we like to incorporate it into our title and the story of our, of our show. Now there's another piece to this. In addition to Scott having questions that I don't know, and I have questions that Scott doesn't know, you guys watching us actually get to participate tonight if you would like. So as Scott and I are talking, we are going to use the event page to accept, um, you know, to, for you to tell us that we have a great show ahead of us and that you would like to ask us a question live that neither one of us know what the question is. And the three of us, Scott, myself, and you, whoever has the question, will join us. And then after we discuss it, you'll pop out and somebody else will come in with their question and join us. This is awesome. Mm. Okay, so if you have a question, start 
don't tell us what they are in the comments, but tell us you have one, and we'll take them in the order that your comments come in. Oh, in I, I, I thought that once, and then uh, I thought that once we were done with our questions, uh, that if someone wanted to actually come and join us in the film strip, that we could send them a a uh, private URL and they could join us for a few minutes. Is oh, Scott, I totally said that, but in a whole different way. I didn't. Oh. I didn't want us to have our questions first. I was thinking. We could start with one of our questions to get them going, and then if there were questions, we would intersperse them with ours. I, w I like that much better. I like that okay. much better. So, okay. Okay. Very so, cool. Hello, Terry, incidentally. Uh, you know, one of the problems with having the, um, the comments here is that we, <laughs> we can get distracted. Um, yes, we can. Shout out to Debbie and David, too, it. for joining us tonight. Hard to my cue. As the tale, well, I guess I just should read it aloud. I, I hate reading aloud because I always get messed up with. I, I don't read well aloud. But um, uh, Terry Lee Britton talks about um, that he had the same experience that I did um, the third night of Brigadoon, where I played the heroine's father, was filling out a, a get well card and missed my cue as the tailor arrived with my pants. They ad libbed and I never lived it down. So there we go. We have something in common. The word ad lib was what I was trying to come up with. So, yes, know exactly the feeling. Believe me. All right. Well, nobody said they had a question yet. So, how about if we start? Do we need to flip a coin or do you just want to ask one of your questions first? What, how do you want to make this? Okay, I'm, I'm thinking of a number between uh, one and ten. <laughs> Okay. Okay. What happens when I pick a number? Well, you see, if if it, it's either well, okay, let, let's put it this way: is the number that I put down an even number or an odd number? And then if you get it right, you get to choose, and if you get it wrong, I get to choose. Does that make sense? Sure. I'm just gonna pick a number. Well. And you're gonna tell me the outcome. Okay, that works. Okay. Seven. Seven. Okay. Well, it was actually five. I don't know if you can see it there. Okay. Five and seven are odd. That means that you get to pick who goes first. Oh, then how about if I do? Okay. <laughs> We're going to make that easy. I thought, <laughs> all right. All righty. I always make things more complex than they need to be, and you always bring things back down to earth, so go for it. <laughs> all right. So this is something that may be on your mind, and it may not be on your mind right now, Scott. And if you were starting over and building a digital footprint, what, where would you start building that footprint and why? Wow. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of like one of those questions. If you, if you knew then what you know now, how would, you, how would you have lived your life differently? And we can totally turn it into that. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I... Uh, I am so happy with where I ended up, and it was such a circuitous route. The footprint that I have, I, I don't give one whit if I have any footprint on Facebook. Uh, I don't understand Facebook. We were on a hangout. I was on a hangout earlier today, and you, you were witnessing it, or Sherry was saying, or someone was saying, if, you, if people knew to Facebook, it's really complex and convoluted. So I think you have to grow up with things. Um, I would, I, I would zero in and get as deep as I possibly could, quite frankly, with Google Plus, but Google Plus didn't come along until recently, and I'm just trying to think of what would happen, because there was CompuServe, and there was you know, AOL in the beginning. Well, how about if we? How about if we take it one step back? If you were to start over today, you would choose Google Plus. Okay. Oh, there is no question in the world that I would choose Google Plus because, in in my view, it is more than a platform. It is more than a social network. It is the way that the world is going to do its business in the future, um, and. It has. It's like Microsoft's integrated software package. So if you learn Word and PowerPoint and Excel and Publisher, if you learn those four applications, they all 
intermingle so all of a sudden the world is your oyster you can do almost anything that you would like to do in the business realm if you just learn the basics of integrated software well Google is integrated life online and so if you learn how to comment nowadays on Google Plus now you know how to do it on YouTube there are um, ways that you can manipulate awesome photographs so I, I would just do a deep dive on Google Plus and I'd just be as happy as I could possibly be that's my answer to your question that's an awesome answer is that a good enough answer it is a good enough answer. Did you want me to be responding also to these questions, or should oh. we? Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> we we decided to do that last time, and I remember deeply regretting it afterwards because I think it's a good idea. So sure, go ahead. Your turn. All right. So I, if I were starting today, once I understood where the audience of my product was going to be when they were ready to receive marketing messages from me about my product or service I would choose that platform and that would be in addition to everything I am doing on Google specifically because if I am a physical business my physical business in, in Google local I think is now I, I don't even understand the evolution anymore but it ties into your business page and so you can get put on a map right there alongside the you know alongside your business page and and you also get the benefits of um, you know of all that being a physical business in addition to all of the opportunities to create networks and do some of the other things in terms of the ranking and the optimization and the content sharing to be found across many other networks so that would be the short version of my answer yeah so I am uh, I'm interested in that answer because it, it reflects who we are and our station in life as well because uh, and and this is a theme that we've talked about or at least I brought up in the past and you know we're, we're at different phases in our life. You are a little bit in the empire building phase, so it doesn't surprise me that you're not only interested in Google+, Plus, which is kind of our home base, but you're reaching out to all of the other places because you're growing and you're going to be walking into places. You know, I, I, for me, it's on a, on a need-to-know basis, and I just want to get right, right to it, and you know, who cares what's going to happen later on? Uh, what what's in it for me and what's in it for my immediate footpath and so there you go our our answers are you know uniquely well, ourselves so I, wanna call, I want I think there's another way to look at that too yes where we are at in our career life I think plays a role but I also think the products and services that we're offering to the world also play a role and and right. we chose and we chose the product because they were appropriate for us. So I'm a little bit more into legacy building, and you're a little bit more into empire building. And That's there's right. nothing, wrong, nothing wrong with either one of them. That's right. I am going to be the queen of the world. I'm, and everybody gets to come be their own respective kings and queens with me, which is the best part about our world today because of how much space and wonderful opportunity there is to network and share and. Nobody, no one person has to do all of the heavy lifting. We can all help each other. I like yeah. that. Yeah. All, all right, Scott, it. it's your turn. Okay. Well, I nobody, wish that I was. You know what? Nobody's nobody's piped up and said, "Yeah, they want to come on the film strip with us." That's that's fine. I want to be next anyway. I would okay. I would I would have uh, taken that prerogative. Um, and then uh, I wish that I was better on comment tracker uh, because Terry pipes in with Google Plus is the new genie Scott exclamation mark if you remember that uh, competition to uh, CompuServe uh, by GE no I don't um, so can, anyway um, and supportive people everywhere and that's what you know I what? kind of saw immediately and I don't remember CompuServe either. That was before oh. my entrance into um, the internet. But oh. everybody that I know that was aware of CompuServe spoke. That was like the basis for everything I knew online was yeah. from CompuServe. So Genie was a competitor or comp complementary uh, service to CompuServe. I just uh, that I don't remember. So good on good on you, Terry. Well. I have a variety of questions here, and since you started off with a professional one, 
uh, I think I'll 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 just throw one right back at you. Are right, you ready for this? I am okay. ready. Bring it. And you know these are kind of familiar themes to us. I want you to describe what you believe are essential 21st century skills. Oh my! All right. I'm writing this down so I can think All about right. it. All right, you can do that. Yeah. Incidentally, uh, shout out to David, who, you know, mm -hmm. Google Plus is about thinking. Yeah, I could go with that. Hi, Deb. Hi, Debbie. Are you ready? Okay, I am. Okay, you have my undivided attention. Ooh. And after this, I might, I'm not going to get out of this, I know, but after this, Phil's got a question, so you, <laughs> but you have to listen because I know this will be, you're going to answer next. All right. Oh, I forgot about that, so, okay, go ahead. <laughs> you get to think about it a little bit. All right, essential 21st century skills. What we really have to be good at today is being ourselves in a way that we have never had to be before, in part because of how connected we are, but also in part because we can be our true authentic selves and still have and build successful relationships for collaboration or sales or maintaining customers and so I feel like that's authenticity is an, a huge piece and if you can't be authentic, uh, authentic in what you're doing then it's not you know, being digitally involved really isn't a good place for you Another would be community building, whether that means you are saying, I am part of a team or I am part of a brand or I am myself and I'm going to go build this community around my interest or my business, okay, go do that. Or whether you are an active participant in an existing community of an interest in your business, that is also something that I believe is a very important skill for the 21st century. Um, I also believe that we have to practice our listening a little bit more. And we also have to, and these are all soft skills, notice. This is not how to use a computer, how to use a mouse, or the how-tos of Google+. These are things that um, supersede all of that in terms of the business and personal actions that we take, which made me lose my last thing. Do you remember what I was saying, Scott? Um, well, listening was the... So you started yeah, off listening. with authenticity and then community mm -hmm. building and then listening, and yeah. that these are soft skills, not the hard skills of how do you use a mouse. Right. Okay, so listening was the last... Um, was the last one that I was going to mention, and, and the point being where to be able to effectively contribute to a community and be able to receive what we may think is a critique but actually might be an enhancement or a, a tangent or an addition to a dialogue, we have to learn how to listen a little bit differently and we have to learn how to um, and we have to learn how to to be able to think bigger than than ourselves when we're listening to other people because of the lens that they are viewing the world through in their own authentic fashion. Okay. Uh, I, I have something that I have to do here. I listened, incidentally, to what you said, and I've got a response to it. But um, we have someone in, the, uh, in our... Uh, uh, Phil wants to uh, go ahead and come on board. So I'm going to send him a real quick post, and then, yep. um, and then, and then, I, the and then I'll answer. I just okay. can't do two things at the same time, evidently. So let's see how this works. So here and I'm trying to figure out an easy way to do this. Can you grab the? Let's see. Well, how about this? How about if I invite? No, I, all I have to do is plus. No, all I have to do is plus mention him, and okay. it was just a matter of finding the 21st century. Um, Oh, oh, oh. Do, you think, do you think I should take the public chip off of the post that I'm doing? Yes. Okay. So, Phil, you should have a post, uh, private, a private correspondence from me, and it's not very fancy, but it should give you a link to join us. 
Yeah, pop on in and get situated while Scott's answering this question. And then we're uh, going to go back to Debbie. She has a question. Okay. Uh, the last one. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, am, I am shocked and, uh, well, I shouldn't be surprised because you were talking about soft skills and I was, you know, I was thinking that it would be often on a tangent of, you know, being able to be competent on a computer and what's going to be happening next and whatnot. But it's, I'm reminded of uh, David Amerlin's um, Global Village and that we are, um, that the 20th, uh, 20th century was an aberration in terms of the skills that we had to bring to bear to market and to buy and all of that, and that we're going back to trusting different people whom we know to make our commerce decisions and you know, all, of this, all of that sort of stuff. And all of the things that you're talking about, authenticity, community building, listening, you know, being able to take critiques and so forth. I, I cannot top that at all. I think that if a person has the sk sorts of skills that you talked about, they will have a successful life if they are online or if they never see another computer in their entire life. So good and I think you. you nailed it. Our skills today extend beyond our businesses and into our personal lives and how all of that relates together because the lines are a little more blurred. Yeah. You know, we are we are what we are and um, okay that's good so I'm hoping that Phil uh, is able to that w whatever it is that we're doing is um, actually capable of doing that but I uh, did we want to do Debbie or did um, yeah let's go ahead and go okay. back to you I'm gonna go back and grab that and read it to you and then okay. um, so hopefully Phil's on his way in all right, so Debbie says, Scott, I know you know the importance of personas. How do you describe the persona that would benefit most from your legacy approach? Thanks, Debbie. Uh, so for those, while well, Scott's putting that answer together, um, okay. Debbie joined us, yeah, Debbie joined us for another show where we talked to, um, where we had this fabulous discussion about personas. And... Well, we had a really good time. So for those of you who uh, were not part of that or are not familiar with personas, what that is is a way to categorize your target markets in a broad enough fashion that you can talk to many people at once, but specific enough to provide them an immediate value to um, what you're trying to offer, whether it's information, whether it's a service, whether it's a product, and how all of that plays into our businesses really uh, matter to where we, what we're trying to do and what our goals are. So if we're trying to increase market share or we're trying to have a competitive advantage or we're trying to price on quality instead of features. Uh, did I give you enough time, Scott? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I I don't have a clue what Debbie Debbie's question is really about, but I I certainly know what I oh, oh, the answer I want to give. So we'll we'll see how well I do, Debbie. Persona a persona is kind of like a stereotype, or it is an arc uh, arc archetype of um, of a an ideal person and mythical being out there who embodies everything that you need to know so that all you have to do is look at that persona, all you have to do is see the specifics about that one person that you've ferreted out and then the answers will flow to you in terms of how you market to that person because you know, you know that per that person's wants and desires and fears and aspirations and what they like and they don't like and if they if they go to fast food restaurants or you know expensive restaurants the whole thing it's the it, you know the person so well it's as if they're they are your best friend and and then you get to turn around and you get to market to them okay so that's kind of a persona so there comes a point in a person's life when you know and and i've 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 achieved it and so i 
and I'm kind of reveling in it as well because there's a lot of power in knowing thyself. And, you know, if you spend a little bit of time redefining yourself, as I have, um, it, it it's great. So you get to know that there's a particular person. There are probably seven stages in life, and and if you know which stage you're in right now, and in this case it would be thinking more about legacy, but you know, not willing to throw in the towel quite yet. So what you do is, if you know, if if you can define something and you can put a word to it, I I now know how to relate to people who are my peers in this in this stratus that uh, that we're talking about, and. That's where a persona could come in because you turn around and write out all of the specific things that would be appropriate for me right now and then extrapolate to just all of those baby boomers who are in that transition between working for someone else and I guess retiring, though we as baby boomers do not want to retire. We want to continue to work as long as we can. So there you go. There's the persona. And and um, that's how I kind of tie the two together. Do the same thing for someone who has a, got a young family, a young child. They are they are looking towards elementary school and maybe middle school. And what's television going to look like? And what about nutrition? And what about books? And what about Drugs and what about you know trips to the countryside? You can figure that person out entirely different by the use of personas. So I don't know if this rambling answer has actually answered your question, Debbie, but that's best I can do. I have a response to that, but I'm ready to move on. If you are, you know, I was kind of closing my eyes. If you if you want to have a response, fine. But I see that there's someone else in our film. Yeah. yeah, Phil's here. He said, "Hey, I want to come on and I want to ask you guys a question." So we are glad to have you, Phil, to join us this evening. Hi guys, thanks for uh, allowing me to come in and crash your party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go, guy. So the question I have is, if uh, what is one habit that you don't like that you want to change but have difficulty doing so? All right. Okay, so this is totally not related to business. Can I tell you? Uh, so I, I can totally answer this, and I should probably answer it from a business perspective too, but from a non-business perspective, the answer would be the amount of sugar that I eat. <laughs> I am addicted to sugar, and I would be the first to say that, that if I don't have my sugar, I'm a little bit crazy, and which cracks me up because... It is what it is, but so if I could eat less sugar, I know that a few other things in my life would change, but I need to continue. That is one of those things that I are continuously presenting themselves as a challenge for me. But see, that is business-like because your diet affects your, your brain and how you think. That's true. So, so diet is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for tying it back. <laughs> I like that very. I like that very much. I don't even have to work. Very it's all hard connected. That. Everything's always connected. It so. really is. That's very true. So, uh, what what habit uh, do we have, or what habit do I have that I'd like to shed? I I think I allow myself. We did a program about being distracted, and I allow myself to be distracted and kind of go down a rabbit hole when it comes to some of the work that I do. I it, could, there there's a task that I could accomplish in two minutes, and I take 35 minutes to do it because I I look at it from every possible angle, and at the end of the day, is it really worth it, especially if you happen to be super busy? So one of the things I appreciate about Jess is that she gets right to the point and she keeps us on track, at least for the Jess plus Scott plus you show. So if there's something that I'd want to change, that's what it would be. So Phil, I have a question of you. Uh oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's not an uh oh. Uh, well, first of all, I'm I'm kind of wondering where do you hail from? What's your home? What is your home city? And what's uh, what city are you living in right now? 
My home city is a little tiny town in Illinois, just off uh, outside of Chicago called Thornton. Nobody's ever heard of it, but the town was known for having the largest limestone quarry. Oh, so that was our so claim to fame. Is that north, south, east, or west? South. Okay. South is Chicago, yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm currently in uh, uh, southeast Idaho um, after spending some time in Southern California. So. Okay, and how long have you been, uh, well, uh, how long have you been there and what's your elevation? Uh, let's see, we've been here about, I guess it's, it's in December, it'll be seven years at the end of, we, we moved here right after Christmas, so it's almost seven years, and we're about 4,700 feet. Okay, well, that's not too, yeah. So, how are the stars at night, on a clear night? Oh, uh, Beautiful. And this time of year, you see Orion, and you'll see the Pleiades, and you can see... I don't remember which planets are out right now. They yeah, I, I'm not much of, of uh, an astronomer, but yeah, it's... it's Yeah, unlike California, we, we actually have some, you know, clean air here, so we can see the sky, and yeah. especially when the moon is full, it's it's pretty awesome. So, it's yeah, nice. it's nice. What, 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 I, I would like to ask you to answer. Are you are you comfortable answering the same question you asked us? Um, what, what habit you have that you would like to shed or change? Um, much like you, Jess, I am. Um, diet is a big thing for me in, in my family. We've been working on our diet for a long time. Um, so uh, right now it's gluten that I'm getting rid of. We we already got kind of rid of the sugar. We're down to like honey and the natural sugar. So we've got that kind of licked. Um, but um, getting my diet squared away um, would be the one thing that those kinds of habits. And what else? That, that, that's actually a pretty tough question when it's turned back around on you. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, it's also staying very good. focused. I think would be you know um, my head te tends to go in a lot of different directions and, and to try to tame it and get it focused on the the one project and get that going. Um, I guess that would be one habit I'd want to change to not try to do ten different things at once. Oh yeah, yes. So and now are they? So when you're thinking about that and. Uh, ten different things at once because you have ten ideas and they're all great ideas or because some of them actually are taking you away from your focus and you're using them as a kind of out because you don't want to yes wanna... I don't know if you can see this but these are notebooks that I have I write down ideas in okay and there's one two three four or five notebooks here and uh, they're all like ones for the podcast that I'm about to launch, ones for general ideas, the blog, just all kinds of different things. So um, it, this is my start to try to get focused. And it does work to a certain extent. Um, but the problem is now I've got it right here and it's all, all these ideas, they're back at me. I've got them down so I don't feel like I have to like act on them right now, but then it mm -hmm. stares me in the face. So, Well, and you know, that actually would be a different way I would ask the question of, you know, what is one thing that you are working on that, that you're doing all right and you want to continue to get better at? So it sounds like you're already doing all right at Focus. You're getting organized with your ideas, and now you're trying to figure out how do I focus on one at a time and actually move them all forward. Another question would be is what... And this is a question I have to ask myself all the all the all the time too, Phil. Is is does this actually help me with my purpose? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, the, if it doesn't, the pages come out. I have sticky notes and paper everywhere. It goes into a special folder called Great Idea, but it's going to the parking lot because it doesn't serve my purpose today. Right. So I yeah. I'm going to have to piggyback off of your answer for that too. In term, you know, in terms of of that piece of it, because I totally get that. What about you, Scott? What about me? What about? <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to add? <laughs> well, I, actually, I did have something to add, but it wasn't about me. It was that um, Phil. One of the things that you might not realize is that you need to keep those three-ring binders or that spiral binders, I should say, because that's part of your legacy. And put it in the box that's called uh, archival box, and 
50 years from now, someone is going to open it up and they're going to find an awful lot more about you than uh, what you could do almost any other way. So, Interesting idea. I just actually, I used to do a, uh, a radio show and uh, I recently found a bunch of playlists that I had from those shows and I tossed them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, bro over the air broadcast or podcast? It was uh, it was a it was a podcast uh -huh. that I did for I started it in two thousand six five late two thousand five. Yeah. So and uh, yeah, I, I recently just got threw all that away. So <laughs> I could have used that advice <laughs> a few <laughs> weeks ago, but <laughs> not necessarily. Okay, well thanks thanks for coming in, uh, yeah. Phil, and, and glad to meet you. It's yeah, wonderful. glad to meet both of you too. Thanks for letting me come in. Thank you. All right. Okay, Jess. Cool. That was cool. that was awesome. That was really cool that, that Phil came on to ask us a question. And who knew my answer actually related to business? So you know, that takes us to our next question. And I guess I'm up, huh? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, I have to pay. I have to pay attention. No, don't I. I don't think you really have. Well, you have to pay attention because it's going to be a good question. But at this, well, you know, well, that kind of was our just question. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this. Okay, so I'm going to read from a book to you. This is oh. speaking of um, discipline or focus or something like this. This is one of my favorite books right now. The one thing that you can do, and um, it's actually. My latest blog post too was about was a was a short summary of this book, in a picture, no less. Okay, so here's a big idea to take away, and I just want your response to this. All right, Scott. One, don't be a disciplined person. Be a person of powerful habits and use selected discipline to develop them. Two, build one habit at a time. Success is sequential, not simultaneous. And three, give each habit enough time. Stick with the discipline for it to become routine. Habits on average take 66 days to perform, or excuse me, to form, which is interesting because I've heard that all the way around, but this book says 66. So what's your general, my question is, what is your general response to those three things? Okay. Um, I love them. I think that they're, I think that they're really terrific. I, you know, someone once said, I don't know if it's true or not, but I believe it, that the human brain cannot multitask, that it can it can go from one thing to another, but the more that you try to do that, the less efficient that it is. And I'm a great believer in a habit that you, you can form a habit and then you can form a different habit within you know a certain period of time. But it takes a little while for those pathways, neural pathways, to rewire themselves. Uh, and that's one of the uh, it's one of the cruelties of addictions because you cannot break a habit if you've got the handicap of uh, having either a physical addiction or a mental addiction that that makes it that much more difficult to change a habit. You have to really over overcome that. So, uh, and I'm a great believer in the idea that you create your own reality, and so you can deliberately say, "This is where I want to end up." and in a moment of clarity say that's what I want to do and then go for it and it can be methodical and after a while you just end up if you're lucky and you know you end up where you are so I guess that means be careful what you ask for because you might just very well get it <laughs> Isn't that, I love how you say that, be careful what you wish for because you, you might actually get it. <sighs> so I, I actually really liked everything that you said and I also am a believer that we create our own reality and I also am a believer of what we put out in the, out in the world is what comes back to us. And so when... Um, were you know and actually before I'm gonna throw Debbie into my answer because she actually joined us for a show I love it it's really kind of cool how all these things are coming together Debbie joined us for a show once totally impromptu and we had this fabulous discussion about uh, about this exact topic and I think all three of us could talk about that forever and ever so if I were to sum it up um, I would say that 
the more focused that we can be, the bigger the bigger the impact we will have. And so if I were to think about that in terms of my business skills or my business, the more focused I can become, the, the more skillful I will be and the more impact I will have, which will lead to a much broader general knowledge naturally. I don't have to go out of my way to become an expert at five things. I can become an expert in one thing and the four related things will by proxy become a part of that, a part of that knowledge. Plus, we have each other and we have our networks to help us with that. So I'm also a believer in that. I like the way you get close to the camera too. <laughs> something that you taught me. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying you're saying it's it's good to focus in and really get good in one thing and other things will kind of come along for the ride on the coattails. Yes. I I can I can go with that. I can go with that. I'm a worldwide web habits lately. It's complicated. Okay, Terry, Terry Lee Britton says Terry, that sounds oh, like a story. I'm the worldwide web of habits lately. It's complicated. What is that? <laughs> Can you help me out with that? He doesn't want to talk about it on air, but he he is he understands what we're talking about with okay. habits. <laughs> well, I could now be putting words in his mouth. That is my interpretation. Yeah. Okay. Well, is it my turn to ask you a question? I think it is. Okay. I, you know, there's a personal question here, which isn't really um, all that personal, and I'm afraid we're going to run out of time if I if I do that one. So I'm going to go to one that's philosophical, and um, um, okay. I think that you'll really like this one, uh, Jess. But. Um, and it's it's kind of seasonal, and amazingly, it's a it's on a topic that you've already brought up. Go figure. Go figure. So, okay, if you could go ahead and describe the nature of gratitude, okay? <laughs> okay. Where does it where does it come from, and where does it go? Well, if I were to turn to physics, and no matter can be created or destroyed, it is all around us, and it is up to us to find it. And then we go into a little bit more of the philosophical of we have to choose to see it. And what I there are a whole lot of words like gratitude that you know whether it's joy or the value of gifts or um, you know, sharing what you have, all of those things come to mind when I think about gratitude. But ultimately, I think there, there's, there are a lot of personalities out there, but I think there's two ways that we get energy. We either get energy out and we bring it into us, or we generate energy in ourselves to share out with the world. So if you wanted to call it light, people who have their light out of themselves and they bring it in, um, would be reflecting the beauty and the gratitude that's out there that is neither created or destroyed because all everything that exists exists. Or if it's internal, you're shining it out. And doesn't matter which you are, you're one or the other, and it all has to do with the light that, that is there and, and what we choose to do with it. So if we choose to use it for good, awesome. And if we choose to, to not use it for good, we tend to probably be a little stagnant, which um, means that we're searching for something, and that's why we might be you know, joining a hangout or joining a community. And I think that when it comes right down to gratitude, we can find it in the littlest things around us, right? I mean, just the other day, now totally off the topic, but it relates to this. We got hand-me-down toys from my sister, right? Her kids are just a little older than Carter, and so she sent us all the medium-sized Legos that they don't use anymore. And we had a stowaway, and we had a stowaway of this teeny, tiny, little, green, monster, mushy thing. And I didn't know what it was, so I took a, <laughs> I took a picture of it, and I was like, I think we had a stowaway. Are you missing this, friend? And it turns out that this friend is very important to them, and so they had been looking for it literally that day. So we are, were able, through the course of 
whether you call it serendipity or the fact that I found something and I put it out to the universe, wow, how cool is that? We had a stowaway and then somebody in Texas went, oh, we're missing our friend and we were able to bring it all together. We are going to be able to return that little green friend. Not this week because we had to cancel our trip to Texas, but on another time. So the attitude of gratitude, you get what you put out and it actually works in a, in a slightly different way as well. Very nice. Okay, well, I guess it's my turn. Um, yeah. And it's a, I, I guess it's a favorite topic of mine, not that I think about it all the time, but every time I seem to get into a conversation with someone about it, it really gets to be a, a deep conversation very quickly, that it's we step into the space that we want to occupy and well, gratitude is a, well, first of all, I think I'd like to say that gratitude is probably an underrated and underappreciated state of being. It's not an emotion. And I was talking to someone the other day uh, about it, and they said that it was active. And I thought, oh, that, that's an insight I hadn't really thought about before. Uh, and so it's through gratitude that we are able to maneuver ourselves into a pretty nice space uh, that is pretty bright. You're talking about light, right? Uh, and a place in which good things can happen. And if one wishes to instead honor and worship bitterness, then that's where you know that person is going to migrate to. And who wants to who wants to live in a garden of bitter herbs when one can live in a garden of uh, gratitude. So there is uh, there's real benefit to consciously thinking about it. The, the, it, it it's, a, it's a wonderful word to think about and figure out what it means to you. And you know, it's an inherent part of who every being is. I, I believe in my heart of hearts that our nature is filled with the opportunity to have gratitude. It's how we interpret the situation around us and how we react to that, whether or not we are able to keep gratitude as a part of our life or whether we lose sight of what gratitude is and where it is in our life. Yeah. So it's cousin or it's sibling maybe even is that adversity or setbacks are not what the issue is. It's how you respond to setbacks or adversity. Mm -hmm. That is the Ooh, important thing. Yes, and John Harris commented on the event page, to me, gratitude is an emotional alignment with positive flow in our lives. By being in gratitude, we, harmon excuse me, we harmonically resonate with that way you like. Resonating such, we attract more of that type of vibration. There we go. Yeah. Good for you, John. Wow. Yes, thank you. So we're still looking for other questions. We have time for one more question. So that's either going to be one from somebody joining us from our audience or I have another one we can use. So you've got one for me, and I've got I've got one more for you if we still have time. But okay. I guess it's your turn. Tag your. All right. Up. Here we go. Oh, which one should I do? Google Plus or we're gonna go with the we're gonna keep going with this whole gratitude thing. We had no idea how this was gonna turn out, and this cracks me up because that's what it right. Okay, so I had another book which we're not gonna get to that I have a quote from. Right, the situation is hopeless but not serious, and then we're gonna, we'll we'll use that one another time. But I just read this book uh, recommended to me by I'm sorry I don't remember his name, and I think his last name is Swenson. At the moment I can't remember. And this this book, The Go Giver, really it's five values of being a giver and getting success. So to continue on this theme of gratitude and success, here this is a law of value. And the law of value is that your true worth, excuse me, the law of value according to the go-giver, your worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. Your worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. What are your thoughts on that, Scott? Oh. 
Okay, I'm going to collect my thoughts for just a half a second, which is mm-hmm. which is not great TV. Uh, That's okay. So, The Go-Giver was written by Bob Berg and John David Mann. I actually take the covers off of my books because they get in the way, and I put sticky notes, and I write in them, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, I'm sorry I don't have the pretty the pretty cover to show you guys. But it is a fabulous yep. book, and it's a quick read. Yeah, thanks. Welcome. Now we're going to have a moment of silence while I collect my thoughts. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I, I think at, at the end of the day, I think you, you get back what you send out and, you know, there are some, I don't, I don't know if I believe this. There are some who believe that you get it back tenfold, um, but it all goes back to some of the basic underlying principles that you know any philosophy or any religion has and they just all talk about it in a different way it's more blessed to give than to receive uh, and the funny thing is the more you give the more love you give out amazingly the more you you receive back uh, and so that's one of the reasons why it's really important for people not to harden their hearts uh, and if they happen for example to have a tragedy in their life then there's a process by which they can go through to turn that negative into a positive there is a grieving process that people can go through and they can purposely say I'm going to embrace what has happened learn from it and move on from there and so if I remember correctly the quote is that what what was the quote that if you give something out that you'll receive more back your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment so who are you I think I misinterpreted a little bit, but I think it was a great start. Well, this is this is specifically related to um, to business, though, and it does have a very philosophical side to it. So I yeah. think where you started the conversation is perfect. So if you are you are not what you get back. I mean, if someone were to, I mean, no epitaph, no, you know, on a tombstone is going to be what a person received it's going to be what a person gave so at at the end of the day what are they going to you know what is the elevator not even the elevator speech what's the tagline that you're going to have and if your tagline is i got i got more than i you know i got more from you than you got from me <laughs> what a legacy is that <laughs> so that's my answer that's a good answer that that's a really good answer you know you? and I would say something very similar really what it comes down to is so how are you going you know how are you going to provide value and what is the value that you are going to bring whether it's um, you know I don't remember the exact story in the book that goes with that law but one of the things that resonated me with, within the book was this gal she made a fabulous cup of coffee and it was in her relationships with the people and where she got the coffee and then how she chose to brew it and putting her love into that coffee is what made it the most amazing coffee that landed her her biggest job and set her business going after t- taking all the steps to build her business purposefully and I can totally and directly relate to things like that in my life when I let my guard down just a little and I jump out there into a new conversation you never know what's gonna happen sometimes they don't work out <laughs> oh well they weren't supposed to work out or at least they weren't supposed to, to work out at this moment and other times you know I-, I am blessed with how much I'm able to offer and then unbeknownst to me all this other stuff is going on and I just happen to become the recipient of it and it's really neat to be able to try and think about it to go backwards I decided I needed to quit thinking about that and I just need to keep doing whatever I'm doing because it's working and people find value in the information that I choose to share 
and the conversations that I choose to have and the relationships and friendships that I choose to foster uh, in my life and it brings it repays me immensely well said so this is our Thanksgiving special and this is our Thanksgiving gift to those people who have graciously chosen to tune in to see what <laughs> what you and I are up to tonight and I hope that we did not disappoint thank you very much everybody happy Thanksgiving and who knew that our questions would turn into this wonderful um, opportunity to talk about gratitude in an unexpected way so, and it sounds like uh, so there but in a good sense and let's see if we can even go to our close then it might be a second or two for it to queue up but it'll come trust me trust here we go maybe <laughs> it's there it's there it We're is there it we did practice this it, it'll, here we go yeah. Well, no audio, but that's our closing. And happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye for now. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night.